Hello guys and welcome back to Coloring with Haley. It's been a while since we've done a color and chat and we are well into the middle of minis in May so I've decided to do a coloring chat out of the 50 autumn miniatures and I'm going to do this little fawn here. I saw someone do this page on Instagram and it was super super cute. I want to say it was Molly and I was really loving her page and I felt inspired to do it myself. So we're going to do this little deer here and let me get out all my swatch cards and pick out a color to start with. Okay, I think I'm going to start with the 103 in the Ohuhu markers. And actually I am going to zoom in a little bit on this page. There we go. That's better. Yeah, there we go. That looks a lot better. Okay. So we're just going to start out on our deer here. And I do have a blotter page behind here. It's a page out of a magazine. I like to use those as blotter pages because you typically only need one. If I use printer pages, you know, I need a couple, but the magazine paper is thicker, so. This marker is a little drier than I thought it was. We will see if uh, it makes it through coloring this little deer here. So since it is now the middle of May, I'm finally finished with my semester of college. That was probably the busiest semester of college that I've had in a while. I don't know why it was so busy because it was only three courses uh, for the entire 16 week semester. I guess I just picked really, really busy courses. So that's that. I'm happy to be done with it though. I do graduate next year in 2023 and I'm ready for that. Very excited about that. A lot of people, okay, you guys know that I dropped out of high school because I had too many health problems. If I had graduated high school, I would have graduated. And the people I graduated with are most of them have graduated college uh, already. They graduate this spring. So I, I, I feel like a little bit of FOMO. That's the fear of missing out, if you don't know what that means. Like, I, I wish I was graduating this spring with all of them, but I have to go at my own pace through college, and a lot of things happened recently in our lives that put me off doing stuff. For, to graduate with my biology degree, I have to take a certain number of in-person biology courses. I have to take four of them. And you're only eligible to take them once you've taken so many other college courses. You have to have so many credits to be able to take these classes because they're a bit more difficult, they're a bit harder, you know, you kind of have to have some introductory biology courses, some introductory science, and uh, math, a few things like that. So the year I became eligible to take them was, guess what, 2020. And we all know what happened at the beginning of 2020. And so that put me off being able to take them then. And then I believe that they were doing in person again the second half of 2020 in fall. I know they were doing in-person in 2021, but my doctors did not want me to go back to in-person yet, just with my condition. They were worried about how that would go, so I had to just keep doing online classes. And of course, these classes that I have to take in-person are not offered online at all. They're they're specifically in-person because there are lab components to them. For example, in the class that I just got done with, it was histology, and that is like the tissues in your body. And we did a lot of lab stuff looking at different body tissues under the microscope. So looking at muscles and like blood cells and bones and stuff under a microscope. And it was very interesting to do that. I really enjoyed whenever we'd get out the microscope. But you, you know, you can't, that's hard to do online. I mean, you could show a picture of what a muscle looks like under a microscope, 
but actually getting to view it yourself with the microscope is is very different in my opinion totally different experience plus you kind of need to know how to work the microscope you know and online is it can tell you how to work it but unless you actually get a microscope out and you're actually fiddling with the knobs and adjusting the lenses and stuff it's not quite the same and of course learning how to use a microscope and knowing how to work one is obviously a big factor in a lot of biology careers so yeah i did a lot of online classes i kind of got everything else out of the way and did some stuff for a minor basically and it, i didn't get the okay to go back to in person until this year this semester the spring semester so really and truly i missed out on four semesters which would have been the four classes uh, that i had to take in person so i am like a little bit behind i have some catching up to do but i'm working on it we're gonna do these deer spots by the way with um my signal ball gel pens that's why i'm not worried about being too careful around them right now just wanting to get the brown down for the deer right now so yeah, I don't, I am behind. I would like to graduate. I see all the people that I went to school with graduating already and getting to start their careers. I would like to see, you know, biologist by my name and get to start applying for some of the jobs that require my degree. But I have to do things, you know, at my own pace. Really, everything that happened, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't anyone's fault. I don't think anyone knew that any of that was about to happen. So... I just keep trying to remind myself of that. I mean, I'm going to graduate just a little bit slower than the other people, and that's okay. It's all right. I am happy to be done this semester, though. Oof, it was just, it was busy, busy, busy. This second half didn't seem as busy as the first half, even though it technically was the busier one, because that's when that third class came into play. That was a writing class, by the way. So I was way busier because I had to do a bunch of writing. I think, it, I think this semester felt so dizzy because one of the classes that I did typically had a take-home lab component every week. And you had to take it home because it was usually something you had to, like, incubate or grow, like a plant, for example, over the course of a week. Or setting something out in the sun and seeing what happens to it over several days, things like that. So that took a while to do, obviously, because you can't rush it. You kind of have to leave it the specified amount of time to make sure what's supposed to happen happens so I can record it. I think we are just going to maybe barely get this deer with this marker. I did not realize it was so low. I have a similar numbered marker right here in the tau tree which are the shades are pretty comparable to the ohuhu markers so if this really runs out on me we will see if the tau tree marker can carry us this last little bit however after i finish this deer i am going to add this to my list of used up markers for this month because i don't think that we're going to get anything else out of it after we uh, get the deer here. And like I said, I'm gonna come back and do those white spots, but I'm going to come back and do them at the end. That's kind of a finishing touch for me. Uh, same with the eye. I'll probably do that fur as well, like around the eye and the belly here and the neck. Okay, try to get that some of the same shade. Okay, I think we're just gonna barely make it with this. I need to buy the Ohuhu skin tone set because it comes with all the browns and I need those refreshed really badly. I use them a lot of course coloring animals and coloring skin too. Let's try to clean up some of the places where I got outside the lines a little bit. It's easy to do when the markers get dry. I don't have a problem with it when the markers are like really wet and juicy markers. I have more of a problem with it when they get super dry like that. 
I don't know, it just becomes easier to get outside the lines. Okay, let's give our deer a like little dark brown nose. I'm not so sure what color I want to do the scarf yet. Uh, let's do the hooves though. We can do those. I might come back and do the scarf after I do these flowers, which to me sort of look like daisies. I don't really know what they are. I'm not great with flowers. I could identify any of the animals in any of these books that you asked me to, but when it comes to flowers, nope, I do not know them. So we're going to say that they're like daisies. Also, yellow is kind of a, I keep hitting my light, is kind of a nice fall color. And this is a fall book. And I want to do some fall colors in it. So we're going to do these yellow and I got a couple different yellows out here we can use. I do have the summer off though. Um, I usually take the summer off. I don't quite like the summer classes. They are rather difficult. They are condensed, like really, really condensed. So they're typically a 16 week course uh, condensed down into four weeks. So you would be like really, really busy if you did that. And I'm just not a fan of it. Also, I mean, the in-person classes that I have to do are not offered in the summer. That professor takes the summer off. So I couldn't do those anyways. And I do have to go full time to, you know, qualify for some of the discounts that I get on my classes and the grants the state gives and scholarships and stuff. I have to go full time each semester. So you know, if I did summer and got some of the little side classes out of the way, I'd really be struggling to find other classes to take to put me at full time every semester, if that makes sense. Why is this flower so widely spaced apart, but these two are so put together? Well, I guess that one over there is spaced apart too. I don't know. We're going to color it more put together like the other ones, because I don't know why it's so spaced out. Okay, um, let's do this one in this color too. We'll use the lighter yellow on the other two. I'm sorry if the air conditioning is loud, but you get a new air conditioner and it's definitely a lot louder than the old one we had. However, it is too hot today to not have it on. Here in Missouri, we did not get a springtime. I don't know if you guys did where you live. It was 40 and 50 for the longest time. I mean, there were a couple nights in April where um, we had freeze warnings out. It was getting that cold. There may have been one or two days where it was 60, 70 degrees. And now all of a sudden it's May it is 90 degrees out and the heat index of course because it's so dang humid here in missouri says it feels like it is 100 so we kind of just skipped the springtime weather and went right into summer actually let me get my phone and i will tell you what it is outside right now okay it's 90 exactly outside right now it's terrible it's too hot too hot for me. Uh, I like spring and fall when it's cooler, you know, 60, 70 degrees, that's my type of weather, but we really just skipped that this year. So it's, it's hot out already. I'm already wearing tank tops and everything. It's, we're feeling like June weather already. April and May are usually our really nice times of year, but we just skipped that. 
which makes me sad, of course. It's nice weather. Oh well, nothing we can do about it. Makes me worry, though, how hot it's gonna get this summer when it's actually in, you know, the dead of summer, like July and August. Ooh, I bet the 4th of July is gonna be miserable. A lot of tourists where I live for the 4th of July because I live near a big man-made lake and I guess everyone comes to go swimming and fishing and stuff around the 4th of July. But it's gonna be hot, hot out there. Okay, let's, let's do the other flowers. We'll do those in the lighter yellow. I should probably put that up before I lose it or think that it's in my pile of markers that have gone out over here. Okay. I need to get something for the stalks of these two. Despite the fact that it's hot, though, my garden is doing really good. I have strawberries out there, ever-bearing strawberries, so they, you know, they wintered through. I kept them alive. And they're back, and better than ever, I'm picking, like, 10 to 15 strawberries every day off of, I think I'm, there's, like, 9 plants out there. Uh, not too many plants, but I'm certainly picking up strawberries every day that I starting to not know what to do with all of them. I'm gonna make a pie for sure. I have already given some people some strawberries. And those ever-bearing strawberries, you harvest them a couple of times. You for sure harvest them in the spring and fall, but sometimes they'll give you a crop in the summer. Mine usually do. So I usually get three harvests off of them each year. And these I just planted last year. When I was a kid, gosh, we had probably 20 or 30 strawberry plants, and we'd go out there every time it was time to harvest with five-gallon buckets and just pick strawberries all day, and we'd have huge bucketfuls of them. We made a lot of pies then and sold a lot of strawberries and gifted a lot of strawberries to people. That was too many plants. Definitely downsized, uh... Well, we, we had a really rough, rough summer, and a lot of them died, and then I decided we don't need that many anymore. It was just way too many, so we just have nine now. We've got some tomatoes and cabbage going. I've got some cucumbers that I need to get in the ground. We didn't plant too many things this year. We kind of have to be careful with what we plant. Last year, I did melons. I did watermelons and cantaloupe. And I didn't ever get too many off of it. Uh, they were growing really, really good. But it just got too miserably hot in the summer when a lot of the melons were still growing and not ready to be picked yet. They weren't even to a point where like you could pick them and they'd ripen in the house or something. They really still needed to be on the vine. But it got so hot one day that they all Busted. I don't know if any of you have ever had that happen to you if you've been growing melons in really hot weather It gets too hot and your watermelons just bust they bust open and well Then you got to pick them. I mean you can't do anything with them after that So probably not gonna do melons this year, especially since I think it's going to be even hotter This year than it was last year and it was pretty hot last year So no melons Probably just what we've gone with. We did try to do carrots, and they didn't turn out too well. And the first time growing carrots, I've never grown them before. Uh, I don't know if we did not space them out enough. I mean, we were out there, you know, pruning them and stuff a lot. But they just, despite being in deep soil, I don't know. They didn't really grow very much. So I kind of think what few plants we've got out there right now are probably what we're going to do. We do have some radish seeds left over from last year because we planted a ton of radishes last year. I can always get those to grow. Our radishes always turn out fine. So I'll probably put some more radish seeds in the ground. Uh, we have them on, it's like a roll. And so you don't have to worry about like spilling a ton of individual seeds everywhere. And I really like that. So I need to put those in the ground for sure. I know a lot of people garden. 
I know that's very popular. We do have a fence around our garden because, of course, rabbits are pretty bad. But you know what really likes to get into my strawberries? It's turtles. And so we've got a fence up now that rabbits and turtles can't fit through. The only thing that can still get out there is birds. And actually, we had a problem with the birds last year. Uh, the big crows that are hanging around. And I don't really know how to get rid of those. I mean, I guess I could put up a scarecrow. But I don't know if those really work. Doug had planted some sunflower seeds. He really wanted to grow some big, tall sunflowers. And the crows dug up all the seeds that we planted and ate them. I, I had no idea that they would do that, to be honest. But they sure did. And they sure dug up everything we put out there and ate all of it. So I don't know how we do... We do have a greenhouse, so I guess we could start the sunflowers in there and then transfer them once they got big enough, but I'm worried that the birds would be bothering them trying to, you know, pick the seeds out of the flower still. Once it grows, so I don't know. We do have kind of a big problem with crows. We have a bunch of bird feeders out with seed in it, and we get a lot of cardinals. That's, that's one of the things we mainly get, but occasionally I will see, again, those starn crows out there, and they kind of bully the cardinals and other little birds out of the seeds, and I just, like I said, I do not know what to do about the crows. We have some of those, like, plastic owls, the glowing eyes that you're supposed to hang up, and it'll scare them away and they don't really work so I don't know what to do about the crows but that kind of hinders us from planting some stuff we do have flowers in the ground we have dahlias um, we did tulips this spring a lot of flowers my mom really likes planting flowers I'm really more about the vegetables and fruit but there are a lot of flowers in the ground already we did plant some wild flowers um, we have a lot of hummingbirds because that's my dad's thing. We like to garden. My dad likes to feed hummingbirds. Gosh, he probably has five or six hummingbird feeders and he makes all the stuff to put in it himself. You know, rather than buying the dyed stuff, he mixes up his sugar water every week and puts them in the feeders and cleans them. So we have a ton of hummingbirds, but we went out and bought a big thing of seeds that's labeled as like hummingbird butterfly mix. And they're wildflowers, and basically you just kind of till up the soil and throw the seeds in and cover them back up, and that's what we did, and they are starting to come up, uh, kind of surprisingly, since it was such, I don't know, I haven't had anything that you plant where it's just kind of like, you know, rake the soil, throw it in, and cover it, and see what happens, but they are actually coming up. So we'll see if the hummingbirds like those and if it attracts butterflies. We also try to attract bees, you know. They pollinate everything. They're good to have around. There are a lot of people around here that have their own, I don't know, would you call it a beehive or just a bee colony? I guess a bee colony. A lot of beekeepers around here is what I'm trying to say. And they do give us local honey. But there are a lot of wild bees, too, and we like to make sure those are fed. Speaking of bees, I know that, that well, this is kind of, this is my train of thought, okay? I mentioned the bees, and I was like, ooh, honey, and you know what eats honey? Bears. There has been a bear spotted in our area. I'm not too concerned about it, personally. I mean, I'd say it's living out here. In the middle of nowhere where I live, you get bears, that's fine. Let me get a marker, okay. I'm gonna use this big marker to do these really thin stalks on these flowers here. So I'm not really worried about it, it's just a black bear. Uh, from the pictures and videos I've seen people sharing when they spot it out in the woods or whatever, it looks like it's just a young black bear. I'm not too concerned about it, we have bears out here. We've had bears out here for years, I've never like encountered one well okay i've seen one from a vehicle i've never encountered it like going on a walk in the woods or something i've just seen one from a vehicle i don't think that they really get that close to people out here i think they're pretty shy i mean i know in some places like in california you'll see them walking around people's neighborhoods i think they're just too shy out here not used to people which is good you don't you don't want them to be used to people you don't want them to get too used to people, and then people start feeding them, and that's dangerous. 
but there was a bear spotted, which was interesting because it's been a couple years since um, anyone has spotted a bear out here. I do have some blackberry plants, though, and I'm always worried that I will go out and... They're wild blackberries, by the way, not... They're ones that I planted, and I'll go out and I will find a bear in my blackberries. That is a possibility. I know that it's a possibility. That would be very interesting, I think. But I'm not sure I would like to encounter the bear. Uh, it could eat as many blackberries as it wants, as long as... I don't have to walk up on it and see it. We also have a lot of possums. Um, just saw one in the yard the other day. I don't live with my parents, but I live like right next door to them. And my dad has a big smoker. He likes to smoke meat in. And they have a back porch. And the possums, I guess they can finesse the door open. Since they do have like thumbs and everything. And they'll get on the back porch and... My dad will see them often when he looks out the window at night. On the porch underneath his smoker, there's like a bowl down there, like a bucket that catches the meat drippings and stuff from the smoker. And they'll be like in that eating them, which I think is pretty funny. Uh, they'll be in it eating those. I mean, we don't eat them and we always just clean out the bucket really good because they've been in it. It doesn't touch you know, any of the meat that we cook or anything. It's at the very bottom. There's just a hole through the smoker that it can drip through. But they get in there and they eat that. And you'll see little, like, greasy footprints left on the porch. So we do have a lot of possums out here. A lot of deer, too. Speaking of deer, which I'm coloring. A lot of those. I see them in the yard sometimes, even. They'll come up and, uh... They'll be eating grass and stuff. Those don't bother me. I'm fine with the deer and the possums and stuff. Possums are a lot friendlier than raccoons. I didn't tell you that from personal experience. So if something's going to come up and eat stuff in the yard, I'd prefer that it was possums. If you remember a couple of years ago, we had all those problems with that dang armadillo in our yard digging holes everywhere and we went outside and tried to catch it because that's the that's the advice i was given by other animal people was that the easiest way to get the armadillo was not to trap it but just to catch it with your hands because they really can't hurt you and that was like a circus uh, but i haven't had an armadillo come back since then since we relocated that one which is like what we were told to do I don't know, I live a wild life out here. I'm, I'm, I, I hear that when I speak about it now. A lot of the people I went in class with thought that I did too, but well, a lot of them lived in town by the college, though. I kind of have to drive to get out there. Alright, I'm looking at the time for the video, and we're getting a little close. I'm going to come back when I'm ready to do the finishing touches, and I will show you myself doing those. Uh, if you remember, we had some really nice internet, and I was able to upload whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And then that company went under and just left us all high and dry. And you remember that I've had a lot of problems trying to get good internet again. And I have decent enough internet, but I can't upload videos that are too long because it'll eat up all the data that we get for the internet. So I don't like to make videos that are an hour long anymore. I like to make them around 30 minutes. 30 to 45. So I am going to go finish up these leaves and these mushrooms and then come back and show you myself doing the finishing touches. I may do this scarf in glitter. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I kind of think that would look really nice. So you will see me back in just a second, but it will probably actually be about 30 minutes for me to finish it. Okay, so I finished the base coloring and I'm going to work on doing some of the outlining now. And I thought some of you guys would want to see how I do that. I'm just using these Crayola Super Tips, which is a small set. I don't have too many colors, so... I just try to have to match it the best that I can, and I just do some of the outlining kind of where I think 
there would be shadows. So there would obviously be shadows, you know, around the scarf and around his leg here. Probably right there too. We'll do it down here as well. I do have something very, very exciting coming in this month. So you'll have to see that in my haul. I think you will like what I've got coming in, and it is related to what I'm doing right now, so I'm excited to bust into that. I came in at a good time, too, when we're doing these books that I like to do the outlining in. Let's see. We have a shadow around his knee here. And I just try to keep it the straightest that I can. I cannot draw a straight line for the life of me, so... I just try my best, but it kind of totally transforms the whole page to just do a little bit of this, and I like it. I think it's uh, relaxing to do. I know I say uh a lot, and I don't know why. I haven't done the white gel pen yet. I do that last because the outlines would get on the gel pen. Let's do an outline under his mouth. Uh, oh, here we go. Under his ear like that. I think both sides would kind of have some. Okay, that looks good for that. We'll move on to the flowers then. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to get out the dark yellow that I have and the light yellow that is in these Crayola Super Tips to do the flowers. I'm just going to, I feel like I set my hand in something wet, but I didn't. That is something that I do a lot, which is why I'm going to do the glittery scarf off camera. Otherwise, trying to do it on camera, I will set my hand in it which is something that I do a lot with the glitter gel pen before it's like completely dry and then there's a glitter all over me and usually like glitter all over the page. So, gotta be careful with that. Just doing these little lines here on the flower. Okay, there we go. We'll use, I'm gonna do this one because I've got a darker yellow for this other one. Okay, I'm gonna go here again. I am not by any means a professional artist and my understanding of shading and where the light comes from is very basic at best. So I just kind of put things where I think that it would look good. Where in my head I'm like, yeah, that would go here. And maybe that's not accurate, you know, maybe I'm not being accurate with it, but that's okay. As long as I like what I'm doing and I think it looks good, then that's good enough for me. And also, I just like the process of it, you know, I just like doing the coloring. It's relaxing and calming to me. It's just fun to do. So it's not as much about the finished page to me as it is about the process of just coloring it. So now I'm going to do this darker one and then when I finish this darker one you'll see me come back again to show you how I do some of the other finishing touches because the finishing touches are really what makes it to me. It's very naked looking right now without all of the finishing touches on it. I gotta do the white with the gel pen, and I'll show you that. Again, I can't draw a straight line to save my life, so... I just do what I think looks good with the gel pen. But we are gonna go over the deer's spots. Like I said earlier, um, I wanted to go over these spots and do those and make them look nice. That's why I wasn't too uh, worried about coloring around them with the marker. I knew I was gonna come back and outline them with the white gel pen anyway. So, once we finish up this flower here, then I will cut away and do uh, the mushrooms, and I'll go ahead and get the glitter on his 
scarf. And I need to color his pupils too. I just realized that I haven't done that yet. So once again, you will see me in seconds, what it will have been minutes for me. Well, speaking of making messes, I made one anyways. Um, I set my hand in wet marker and it kind of dragged some of it there. I don't know if it'll even show up on camera, but I did make a little bit of a mess like always, and that's okay. As I was saying, I, uh, it's all about the process for me, not so much the finished page being perfect every time. But I did give him a glittery orange scarf, and now I am doing some of the white outlines. We are doing them on his little spots. Hang on, let me scratch this pen on something else. There we go. So that it'll get started. There we go. That looks so much better with those white spots. I knew that I wanted to do the black outline of these in a white gel pen, so that's why I wasn't too concerned if I went over the lines on these a little bit. This gel pen has like a big tip on it, so... Big nib, I guess it would be the right word, so we gotta... It'll cover all that up. I don't think I'm gonna do too many highlights. I know some people really like to go all out with the highlights on these, but I kind of only like to do them on things that I think would have highlights. And the flower petals, to me, aren't the right material to have the white highlights on them. Like, I did a page recently with an alligator, and she had a lot of highlights on her because her scales would be really reflective like that. I like this fur on the deer, I just don't think it would be super reflective, so... I'm not going to do highlights on him or anything, I'm just doing these spots. And then I'm going to do his fur on his belly. I did the fur on his head already. And I'll show you how I do that. She's got these little black lines here. I guess to maybe indicate where you could separate into two different colors there. Like he could have, you know, like I did the brown and white belly. Or just to add a little bit of fur detail. Also, I'm sorry that my neighbors started mowing just like a couple of minutes ago. So we almost got through the whole video without it. You can probably hear it in the background. I apologize about that. They do have quite the big mower. I know you've got to be able to hear it. We almost made it, though, without them doing it. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in real good here. You can see the white here. Let me let that dry for a second because I will set my hand in those wet spots. Oh, we might do some highlights on his hooves. That would be nice and we're doing. Okay. I just kind of flick the pen. Well, darn, I gotta scratch it out again. Okay. I just sort of flick the pen in the direction that the hair is. That's just kind of how I do that there. Let's do some, let's do a little highlight on his hoof. There we go. There we go. All right. Now I will zoom you back out because we are done with this page. I'm not going to do the white in his ears because there's only white in there and you wouldn't be able to see it. Let me get some of the stuff out of the way so we can orient the page correctly. You see, I need to zoom out just a little more. There we go. There we go. Let me get those out of there. That is our lovely little fawn hanging out in the forest in the fall. And his scarf is super glittery. Can you see all that? This is a really fun page to do on camera. I am trying to color a page out of all of them. I think it's only the fourth one out of 11. <laughs> I've been doing multiple pages in some of the other books rather than coloring a page in all of them. But I am still going to try to challenge myself to do that. So we will see how that goes. Thank you guys so much for watching this little color and chat for this month. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you're having a lot of fun competing in minis in May.